Now usually, hearing the word Leviathan in the world of Subnautica is never a good sign. You hear a roar from the distance, out of nowhere a giant dark shape emerges, and you and your sea moth are both dead. That's how the story usually goes. However, today we will be talking about a Leviathan which is in fact not nearly as dangerous as any of the other creatures belonging into the same class and one that you could almost say is mostly peaceful, well, at least until provoked. Today, we will be talking about the Sea Treader Leviathan. I will be telling you everything we know about these creatures, where on the map you can find them, what they look like, what their behavior is like, and maybe some other interesting points of trivia and background information that I'm able to dig up. Of course, just as with my other lore videos, there is a solid chance of this containing spoilers to the story of Subnautica, so if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want to have it spoiled, I strongly recommend clicking off and coming back to the video later. Now with that out of the way, grab your rebreather, get ready to explore the seabed, and let's go. Now, first of all, the Sea Treader Leviathan is what you could call a peaceful or even defensive Leviathan class life form, which is in fact the smallest of all the Leviathans you can find in the game. They can often be found roaming around the Grand Reef or, as the name suggests, the Sea Treader's Path. In their appearance, the Sea Treaders come in three different sizes, ranging from small through medium all the way to large, or I suppose you could say adult, with a body that consists of a smaller torso with two long double-jointed back legs and a, well, front third leg which in fact also doubles as the creature's head, mouth and a bunch of segments that allow it to move around freely. Now looking closer at their head, it features two pairs of large eyes and from the underside of it, you can see two large feelers which extend outwards about the length of one-third of the sea treader's leg. According to the PDA, these two extensions can detect a range of scents which can help the sea treaders find the new food and nutrients in the world around them and also to locate other members of their species which might be in their vicinity. Colorwise, their body is mostly blue and or orange with small spots of bioluminescent patterns and just as already mentioned, their size can sometimes vary specifically when appearing in herds where usually you could see one larger, presumably mature one and several smaller infants or juveniles. Now, as already mentioned, the Sea Trader itself is not aggressive to the player, it will mostly just walk around slowly in its pre-programmed path, every once in a while emitting loud echoing calls presumably to the other Sea Treaders in the area. However, if the players were to try to intersect their path, they will in fact attack them removing 40% of the player's health bar. Occasionally, these things will stop in their tracks to defecate, dropping what you can pick up as alien feces, or in other situations to presumably feed, where they will place their beak down into the ground and move it around supposedly looking for nutrients in the seabed and the grass around them. Funny enough, every time a sea treader takes a step, there is a chance that it might spawn anywhere between 1 to 3 shale outcrops that will slowly sink back down into the ground after a short amount of time. If however you were looking to find these creatures yourself, do remember that both according to databank entry and the observed behavior, as soon as these things decimate the flora of a single area, they would simply move on, which is also why in the game they only very rarely stay in one spot for a longer period of time and mostly will follow their migratory behavior. As a final nod to their behavior, it is also worth noting that the families usually tend to keep the young towards the center of the group, somewhat similar to elephants. But let's say you did actually want to find them after all, so where should you look? Well, as already mentioned, the Sea Treader's Path is a quite extensive biome where these things can mostly be found, which intersects the Grand Reef, the Sparse Reef, the Dunes, and one of the Blood Kelp Zones. This biome in its own is characterized by a combination of a lot of sand, rocks, and larger areas which might be covered in seaweed, with all types of different flora decorating the areas. At one point, it does actually go through a rather solidly large dark tunnel where, if you're interested, you can find a lot of ruby and lithium deposits. 
Now because I know you guys and I know there's some overachievers amongst you out there, as an interesting point of trivia, if you actually wanted to fight one of these things and try to kill it, you should be a bit wary as the usual tactic of freezing it with a stasis rifle might not work so well because these things are in fact immune to the effects of the weapon. Now essentially that is all of the information we are outright given by the game about this Sea Treader Leviathan, however there are a few more points of trivia and interesting facts that we can go into just to top this video off. Firstly, a really good point mentioned in the wiki is that the Sea Treader is in fact one of only two Leviathan class organisms on the Subnautica planet whose eggs are never seen, the other being Reaper Leviathan. Now, as already mentioned before, while their behavior is somewhat similar to real-life elephants, chances are the actual appearance of these things was partially inspired by an actual deep-sea creature, the tripod fish. And finally, a whole bunch of people online have mentioned that the sea treaders strongly resemble a strider from Half-Life, and now that I've read that, I simply cannot unsee it, so hey, who knows, maybe it was partially an inspiration. But anyways guys, that was all of the information I was able to dig up on the Sea Trader Leviathan. This was a requested video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe learned something new about the interesting world that Subnautica takes place in. If you liked the video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing, all of those would be very much appreciated. And just to finish this off, I know a lot of you really want me to check out and do lore videos about Subnautica Below Zero. I definitely plan to look into it, however, considering how early access it is right now, I don't want to start pumping out lore videos when there is still stuff that might be added and which might drastically change some of the information that I would otherwise be giving you. But anyways, I'm sure you guys understand, I wish you a beautiful rest of the day and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.